So you want to make an animated movie, but you don't want to spend the next four years trying to get an animation degree, and you don't even want to spend six hours trying to learn how to make a donut. No, you're looking to put your ideas into action in a way that's fast, looks good, and is fun. Then you've come to the right place, my friend, because I was in your shoes just one week ago. I went from this, oh no, I can't even move, to this. And I'll show you every step I took along the way, because this is the video I wish I had a week ago. So here's what we're gonna do. Step one, how to get a 3D animated software for free. Step two, how to use AI and existing 3D assets to start making your video. Step three, how to get your 3D characters to work with multiple pre-made animations. Step four, how to animate your camera to move around your characters. And step five, how to quickly add light to your scene and export it into a video. Of all the tutorials out there, I couldn't find anything like this for the beginner beginner to create something now. Hey. If you're new here, I'm Dan Pollard, and at 29 years old, I left the corporate world to start making tutorials like this one. I personally want to thank my 790 subscribers. Without you guys and your support and your comments, I couldn't have made it this far. I need to give a shout out to this guy, Lord Holloway, for designing my amazing thumbnails on this channel. I'd love to hear from you and see what you're working on, so comment below, and I'd love to check it out, and let's get back to it. Before we begin, you gotta have a movie or story that you wanna make. Learning new things is hard, so you gotta start with some kind of reason. For me, I wanted to make a 3D werewolf for my live action movie of Wolfman. Step one, let's get a free 3D software called Blender. If we were to look up best 3D animated software, across the web, there's like Blender, Autodesk Maya, Cinema 4D, Cascader, 3D Studio Max. But let me tell you why I chose Blender, cause it's free and the type of stuff it makes is awesome. What? I mean, you can make some pretty cool looking animations. From what I could tell, you could do pretty much anything in Blender. So how do you get it? First thing you do is you just search for Blender. Boom, then literally you can click this download button right here. But if you go to the main page, click the download button right here. Then download it for whatever you're on. I'm on a Mac, so this whole tutorial, I'm gonna tell you everything Mac. But here's the main thing you need to know if you're not on a Mac. If I say Command, what I really mean is Control. If I say Option, I really mean Alt. Besides that, everything's gonna be pretty much the same. You click this button, you click Download. And then it will open up, and then you just save it somewhere. Like, you save it in your Applications, and you click Save. And click Install, you'll see it right here in your Applications. Double click on it. If this is your first time ever opening Blender, then you're in good luck because I had probably downloaded this uh, like a couple years ago, never even did anything. Like opened it and was like, oh, I'm too stressed. I was like, I don't even know the right thing to click. Like am I, am I doing VFX, am I doing video editing, am I doing like sculpting, am I doing general, 2D, oh, do I want to open something? Like I was overwhelmed by the first page and I closed it. And then like a week ago, I didn't know how to do like hardly anything. Like I just would click general file and then I'd be like this and I'd be like, Oh no, I can't even move. Like if you click and click your mouse, you can't move around and you're like, what's going on? That's That was me. I couldn't even figure out the basics. So the weird thing about Blender is it's kind of it's kind of weird to navigate, but you're gonna want a mouse. So if you don't have a mouse with your computer, then you're gonna navigate using this thing over here. Like, like Z brings you up and down like this and you click the Z and you drag it down, you move up and around, use the Y to move left to right. Okay, use the X to go up, like, to like orbit. Is that X? No, it's like the Y, X thing. But if you have a mouse, you're going to use the middle, like the scroll wheel on your mouse. But you know, if you just scroll up and down, you're gonna zoom in and out on this box. But if you hold down the middle of the wheel, then you can orbit. This is what they call orbiting, like you're like, floating in 3D space. If you click on it, you notice you can't like move it. The way you need to move it is this button right here, move. Now I can drag it to where I want it to go. I'm holding the middle of my mouse to over around it, under it, above it. I can zoom in and out. If I hold the middle of my mouse button and shift, I can move side to side like this. All right, that, that, that's pretty much it. You can also hold G and it will move a little like with the thing selected. So I have the cube selected and then click the cube. My mouse is over here and I push G, the cube will move wherever I need to. So let's get rid of the cube. Just click the X key is how you delete. So you click X on your keyboard and it will say 
delete right there, click it, boom, now the cube's gone. So that's how we open Blender. Let's uh, talk about 3D assets. Like where do you get them? Well, actually you can just download 3D assets. So you can like look like free 3D animated models. Models are just like a type of asset. So you'll see a couple sites pull up. Turbo Squid has them. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Mixamo is free. So Mixamo is actually ran by Adobe. So you can log in with your Adobe license or you can sign up for free, still use it. So I do have Adobe, so I'll just sign in. And then once you sign in, it takes you to like here and you have animations already here and you also have characters that you can choose from. And what's cool about any of the characters that you pick, like if I were to pick this one, is I can make him do whatever so let's say i pick this i pick this character then i click find animations then i can pick any of these animations like if let's say i want him to do something with combat i can click combat there and i want him to be punching boom now he punches like he's already animated ready to go punching and then i download this bring him into blender and i can combine him with other crazy moves and have a whole fight scene with him and a different character download both of them and have a fight and i'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video and what's also cool about mixamo is i can actually upload a character and i'll show you how to do this as well and pick the character file bring them in and then pick one of these animations and boom they do it so you don't have to like make every animation you can just use mixamo to make everything i was looking specifically for a werewolf so i had to search werewolf 3d model and this is the site that came up for me i saw cg trader and so i went in here barak the werewolf which is on sale right now for 48 dollars when it was 80 and then the other thing is uh if you look at these 3d file model formats and you see all these different file types well since we're using blender the dot blend package is going to work but you can see also all these other file types the most common ones are like fbx and that will work or obx or something but almost most of these file types are going to work with blender in one way or another let me uh buy this one and i'll show you what you do click the add to cart proceed to check out you'll put in your payment info and you'll click pay right after you check out it's going to take you to a page that looks like this so i paid 64 dollars for them dang it and then you click the download button and it gave me all the different types to open them. Notice all of them are like this Unity package, dot .rar, dot .rar, dot .rar. So the one that's gonna work is blender.rar. Click download and uh, you'll choose a place to save it. And if you can't just put this straight into Blender, it won't work. And if you just double click, it probably won't open unless you have an app called the Unarchiver. What you need to do is go to the App Store and you're gonna search for the Unarchiver. Showing iPhone and iPad results, you wanna click see Mac app results. This is the one you want. Download him. So you just download it straight off the thing and then it will say welcome to like Unarchiver. Once you've got it downloaded, you can see file and you can see Unarchive 2 and you can tell it where you want it to unarchive files to let's say you say unarchive to desktop or to a folder but let's just do unarchive to desktop and then you click your rar file where that's saved you could save that to your desktop as well and then click unarchive and then it's going to bring up this page for you to that you're saving your desktop and click extract and i think the first time you do it it's helpful to have your rar file and your extraction in the same place so both on desktop for example so here is my files. It's giving me two different ones. Go to Blender, you just click General, and then you can go to File, Open, and then find where it is, and then open it like this. Now, if this works great if you're using a .blend file like I am, but if you're using like an FBX file, or an o, that's not gonna work. Like, let me show you what you gotta do if that's the case. So if I were to download a character up a Mixamo. Why not? We'll use this mutant creepy guy. Let's do an animation for him. And I found some animations I like and I'm going to download them. DFBX, Whiskin, frames per second. So this is how fast an animation moves. So if you're going to be combining your animation and real footage like I am, 
then you want to just match whatever your real footage is going to be at. 24 frames a second. The bigger the number, the more work you're going to have to do, but also the smoother the animation will look. So, like, 24 frames a second is what movies are, like, shot in, what they're exported in. If I need to do something in slow motion, I want to do 60 frames a second so I can do, like, half the speed to slow them down. I found when I did my wolf, I would do 30 frames a second, and then I would slow him down to, like, 80 frames a second because he's just moving a little bit too fast uh, most of the time because, uh, not 80 frames, I would slow him down to about 80%. Um, so, it just kind of depends on, like, what you're making, but... I think 24 frames a second is going to work for this tutorial and what we're trying to do. I think them moving kind of fast is fine. I'll say none here, and then you just click the download button. So now it's preparing download. I'll click save. All right. So I got my wolf in here, and we knew how to navigate. Remember the middle of the mouse, and I can kind of move around him, and he looks really cool. And I can zoom out, and let's bring in the other guy. So you just click file, and then you click the import. And FBX is what they come as. And then it'll pull up this weird looking place, but it's still your thing. So I saved it in my downloads here and go find them. Here's my guy. I click import. Say, okay, very weird how they did this. They stuck them like on top of my other guy. It's okay. But uh, let's uh, let's try to move them off. Let's push G, slide them over, and then click the button. And there he is. We got amateur, which just means the thing. So if I click amateur, it just means like your model. If I click amateur and I have the wolf, which we bought with like 110 animations already in him, where are all those animations? Because he's only blocking, but I want him to do something else. Well, over here, there's this little button that I can see he's doing the block right there. I could click this button and here's all of his animations. So here's the bite, right? It's kind of just like come a little bit closer to the wolf. Here is like his claws in the front. So let's flip around the werewolf or something and have him face him. You notice he's got like this little thing underneath him, right? Let's click on that thing. We can make it disappear if we need to by clicking H and boom, it's gone. Um, to bring it back, I wish you just click H again, but you don't. You actually come over here to the amateur and click the eye, which is probably how you make him disappear too. So we can click on that and then over here, we have a rotate button and we can just, so we can rotate them like that, which is not what we want to do. We can rotate them like this, which we also don't want to do. We can rotate him to face our guy. And it looks like Barak is like standing perfectly on the guy. This guy's not, so I'm going to click on him and click the G button. That gives me... Oh, look at that. He doesn't move. Why? Because I didn't select him properly. I selected like his skin, but not his body thing. So I click the amateur button or like he's got this little triangle on his head. That's what we want to push. There we go. I'm just going to try to line these guys up. Kind of get up above. So you put them both on like the green line. Now, a quick way to like change your camera view is using the numbers. Like push one on the, the number pad or three gives you this side view, or six, or seven, or zero, shows you what the camera's gonna see, more on that later. But yeah, I got these two guys. You use shift and the middle of the mouse to move around. So now my two guys are facing each other. And so what I'm thinking I want is he does those punch things, and I want Barack, my wolf man over here, to like hit him. So let's uh, get uh, that one guy falling down. So yeah, let's add another animation to our mutants. I just want him to do like hit fall or something. All right, we got the knockdown one. So let's click uh, download, but this time without skin because this is a skin, that's what he looks like. We just need his animation this time. And we need 24 frames a second. I'm gonna click download. Okay, now we see that he's selected. And let's say that you're in Blender and you don't see this timeline with the animations at the bottom. Let me show you how you get there. Click this button over here. Like, let's say you see something else. Click over here and then click the dope sheet. And then from the dope sheet, click on action editor. And then you should see a timeline like this. So let's add movement for this guy. So I'm going to click 
file and import another FBX and we're gonna take that knockdown one and I'm gonna click import there. And if I play, I can see him like right there, 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 there he is. It's like a skeleton right behind the wolf right there. See, it's like coming out, falling down, okay? I think all you gotta do to save this guy is click right here and give him a name. I'm just gonna call him fall down, okay? And then I think we could just delete him. Okay, now we want to combine the different animations. We're gonna make the wolf do two of his, and we're gonna make the mutant do two of his. And so what we wanna do is over here, is we want to change this bottom layer to nonlinear animation. All right, we'll start with the, we'll start with just the mutant first, and then we'll come back to the, the wolf. So the, his amateurs like right here, like it's there on the timeline. He does his little flip, he comes forward, he punches. And to save that, we click this button right here, this push down button. And that puts it on the timeline and it says it's there. I also want him to fall down. So with this clicked on, so click on that, all orange, click add, and then click add action strip, and then search for what we just named fall down. So then he falls. But you notice he just falls, he doesn't do the rest. So you need to pull up a menu, uh, click on the fall down, and then click N on the keyboard, and it will pull open this sheet right here. And you can see that extrapolating is cold. We can change it to nothing, and now they're both playing. All right, we're gonna, with fall down selected, hit the tab key, and it brings up this green looking thing. Then click on his little armature crown on top of his head. Then over here on the body icon, data, click that guy and click view display and choose in front. Now we can see the armature like in front of him. Okay, and right now we're in object mode. Come over here, click pose mode. Then you can click like on his, let me zoom in. Click on his hip, the hip bone. We're gonna change our view down here to, oh, sorry, I lost it. The graph editor. I'm gonna pick one of these things in him like his spine or his hip. I don't think we have a hip bone, so I'm gonna click his spine, and then I should see a chart like this, and you can just kind of zoom in, zoom out. You can use the middle of your mouse to scroll. So this is showing me his um, animation for that piece. We can toggle off all of them. The only one we need is the Z location. And then let's click uh, the number pad three, switch to the right view. Just from there to there. So we want him to stay like in the same realm. And what we could do is we could, I can see it's that line and like maybe I'll lose that line. I can click this annotate button and I can draw a line and be like, that's where we want to be. Then you're going to Hit the A key. That's gonna make sure you have everything selected there. And then we'll slide this down to where he starts, right there. And then we're gonna hit the G key and we're gonna slide them back to where they're connected. Boom. So now he stays in the same spot. Yeah. Annotation again, click and hold and do the eraser. Let me just erase that because now he stays in the same spot. Let's go back to the dope sheet editor. Let's change our view back. Let's see, uh, we can change this back from pose mode back to object mode. Let's select the wolf this time. And we got his growl and let's click the push down button and then let's come back to the nonlinear animation and now we have two amateurs. I got this amateur of the wolf and this amateur of the other guy. So here's the wolf's one. So I want him to growl and then I want him to be punched right there. 
So let's uh, add an action strip, do a hit left or something, hit left, and add action strip, hit right, add action strip, hit left. Okay, this one, top one selected, add action strip, and let's do, come over here and do nothing, nothing, nothing. Now for the wolf, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna make these blends work pretty nice. So he's gonna go from that war, and let's add in some blend ins. So, roar, Boom. Add in a little blend in. There, just a little quick one. Boom. And a little blend in right there. Boom. And a little blend in right here. All right, so looking pretty cool. Now let's say like you need to shorten or increase a value. So like here, he's obviously like plenty long and I think it's fine to overlap them, but you can come over here to action clip and you can have a repeat and make him repeat the same action. Like if I wanted him to attack, you know, three times, he would do it three times like that, right? Um, I don't need that. But I can also make this action clip shorter to be more like that. I'm just going to kind of zoom in by dragging this bar. And we're just going to bring this over just a little bit. When he punches, boom. Okay, he's just sitting there like too long. So I'm going to come a quick fall down and go to the action clip and make his frame start a little bit later. Zoom back out. So he's coming, boom. He also gets hit like a little too slow, so let's just speed him up a little bit more to this like 0.9. It's a point seven. speed it up, boom. Let's change the camera view to like three, and they look just like a mess. Like he's standing there, the wolf comes, and boom. So one, I feel like he's a little too close. Maybe after he punches the wolf on the side, I need him to just step back. So let's change our view back to just the timeline editor. And then let's uh, change it back to object mode. And we don't need to be in front. We don't need the axes. Let's just click the top of his little head, the little mutant head, and we're going to click I. With him selected and clicked I, we'll see location. Click location, and then over here, you have item, tool, view. Click item, and we can see it's yellow. That's his location, and all we do is move forward a couple frames, and we're just gonna drag it forward to be like right there. So with that selected, I want to move just the Y over. So he's a little bit further back. And then you hit I again with you like hovering over this. Boom, and that adds another keyframe. So he hits him, slides back. And then I can select these two keyframes, click T, and I can see what type of interpolation we're doing, which is just Blender's filling in the gap between where he was standing to where he is now standing because I moved him and it's not like I'm doing stop motion where I have to do 24 times per second. Um, and so I have constant, I have linear, I have bezier. I want bezier. So linear would be like, just like, if we look at linear, quick linear, he just goes right into it, okay? So it looks like this. But if we were to choose, uh, quick T again, like bezier, he will gradually move into it. All right, so he kind of like eases into it a little bit better. Looks a little bit better. 
And let's go to where he gets hit, which is right there. And let's add a keyframe. So click the armature and click I, location. And let's go boom, boom, boom. He gets knocked that way. He gets knocked this way. Hit an I right there. So now I'm just going to watch everything and add keyframes where they need to move. Cool, now I have my scene, you wanna see it? He does the flip, because forward, punch, 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 get slashed. It's not perfect, but you know, it is what it is. You can't just export this. Like, what view would it export? Everything, and how are you gonna like edit this in a different editing software? So, you have a camera. You have a 3D camera that you have to animate. Here it is, he's right here. And to see what he can see, like I just click on him, you can also find them over here. And if you click zero, maybe, yeah, click zero, uh, this is what would be exported. This would be the movie. It'd be this angle. It's what's in this box. So I'm going to show you how to view in your camera and how to animate your camera. If the zero doesn't work, just click view, cameras, active camera. You can just scroll to make it full screen. There are some camera settings you can change. So like over here, it shows the camera. You can also click this button right here if you don't see it. And let's change it to 20. Gives us a nice wide looking angle. We can go to tool, no view, and camera to view. And now wherever we go is where the camera is moving. But let's do this. Let's go view, navigation, walk navigation. What that did is it lets us kind of move around with our mouse like this without the middle button. Now with W and S and D. So A moves us to the left, D moves us to the right, S moves us up, that moves us like that, Q moves us down, E moves us up, and uh, cancel, just right click. Let's create a hotkey for this. Let's go view navigation, walk navigation, right click on it, assign shortcut, do any key, but I'm gonna do shift F. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this auto keying button, click the space bar, and then hit shift F. Let's come down here and look at the graph editor. Or nothing's showing up, like we filmed it, but nothing's showing up in here. So you just got to Click the camera, uh, push A and X and delete everything and we can start again, because I didn't like it. What I'm gonna do instead is forward while he's twisting in the air, I'm gonna be like spinning. Let me see what that looks like. All right, so I went through and picked all my favorite camera angles like this. All right, we wanna make sure that we have keyframes at the beginning and at the end. So if we're gonna to go to the very beginning, select everything, I, and click available. That's just gonna add, make sure we add keyframes at the beginning and the end. Let's so come here to the very end. And we're going to click I and available. Okay, and now what we wanna do is smooth them out. So there's this key and you can see the blend here is like Alt O or Option O, Shift Opt O. Oh, and that's going to create keyframes wherever there's not keyframes. It's going to do sampling or something. And then to blend it, we could just click this blend button right here. But we're going to just hold option O. That's going to create, if you look at what's happening, it's creating additional keyframes to make it smoother. Look at those lines. They're getting smoother and smoother and smoother and smoother. Last thing we gotta talk about is lighting. If I click this button right here, it will show us um, what our lighting looks like, which looks like this. And you're like, why is it so dark? Why does it like look so weird? Well, we have one little light right there that is lighting our scene. And so, yeah, that's just making it extremely dark. Now, you can add more of those lights. We can also move this light around. 
to make it bigger. And uh, if we push G, we can bring them like down and change the side. And see? We can do that. That's fine. That could work. I'm going to delete it. And what we're going to do instead is there's this cool site called Polyhaven, I think. Poly, Polyhaven HDRI. And which you'd look for the type of lighting that you would like to have. So I'm thinking um, that a night time lighting would be good. Anyway, you just pick one that you like. Click the download button. It's going to save somewhere. Literally all you do is come back to Blender. Click this, the world scene settings. And then for color, then pick environment texture. It's going to make it all pink. Then click the open the open button and then go to where you saved it Just right there open image boom all right once you find an HDR that you like this is how you export it so we got our animation we got our thing let's make sure he exports with the blank background click on this film tab okay and in the film tab you can click transparent now it's still being lit so we can come over here to the camera. This is our export settings. This is our render engine. You have EV workbench cycles. EV cartoony faster render. It will look really fake. It will look darker. The lights won't be as good. It has less information. Hopefully it renders faster. Cycles is good, but you want it on GPU compute if you have a GPU. You can click on edit preferences and you can see I have an Apple M1 Max GPU 32 cores chip so yeah we, we could try this and then your noise threshold here indicates like how much noise is allowed and then if you were to go in uh the lower this number the less noise there would be this sampling is just what we view here but the noise here is what matters 0 0.01 that'd be great that'd be like high quality no noise you could take that all the way up to a one where it's less quality so there you go then you have max samples. The lower this number, the less time it spends on each frame trying to get it perfect. So 4,000 is kind of a high number. You could take that up to 8,000, take it up as high as you want. You could start at 1,000. My experience is, is it takes a really long time to render. So I want to try something to make it faster. Since it's a pretty cartoony fight here anyway, I'm going to change this to just Eevee. I'm going to click on this icon right here. And I could make my resolution be what I want it to be. 38, 40 by... 60. Okay, and it's 24 frames a second. And then we have a start and end time. Let's see. It ends at 155. It starts with frame one. Okay, and then you pick where the output's going to go right here. Then you want this to be RGB alpha. Then you could choose the file format. And we could just export it as a video or ready to go. Or you can export it as a PNG sequence and then you have to bring the PNG sequence back into Blender or into After Effects and then export it as a video or into another video editing software. Last time I did this I did PNG sequence and it gave me files like this. Literally it's a photo of every moment slowly and I set up like multiple cameras so I had different angles. PNG is probably going to give you the highest quality images and if your computer crashes or something you can just pick up from like frame 15 on um, where the video I imagine if it crashes it crashes. Okay then all you do is you click this render button and render animation. And then once it's exported you can bring it into any software add in some backgrounds some sound music to it and you're done. You'll get something like this.